Look, it's so like so many things. You start something new, people get excited about it. You do get a new, uh, often into a little bit of irrational exuberance, to borrow Alan Greenspan's famous phrase, and the world kind of resets. And so that's what's happening. You had a lot of early adopters, you had a lot of enthusiasm. Entering the automobile market is hard, but the electric vehicle hype should make it easy for new companies, right? Well, wrong. Even the big names are failing terribly in the EV market. Why are EV companies failing at such a high rate? The electric vehicle revolution has presented a unique opportunity for entrepreneurs to make their mark on history and potentially amass significant wealth. Take Elon Musk, for example. He has amassed a significant amount of wealth from his EV company, Tesla. Tesla has continued to show remarkable growth and profitability in recent years. The company delivered a record 1.31 million units in 2022 and continued to grow with 1,324,074 vehicles delivered in the first nine months of 2023. This translated to a revenue of 2022 $81.46 billion in 2022, which is a significant increase from the previous year. The first three quarters of 2023 had already seen revenues of $71.6 billion, and the company continues to grow significantly year on year. The same cannot be said for most other EV companies. Their losses are simply unbelievable. Numerous high-profile companies have faltered, succumbing to bankruptcy or enduring relentless struggles. Even established corporations with aspirations in the automotive sector have conceded defeat. In recent years, over 30 companies have either declared bankruptcy or teetered on the brink of financial collapse. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, so, look, we've actually been at the forefront of warning investors about meaningful, meaningful near-term downside risk. Basically, Tesla is under tremendous... Yet EVs accounted for a mere 8% of new car sales in the U.S. in 2023, Projections indicate a surge to 46% by 2030, equating to nearly 8 million vehicles. The challenge is that the EV business is not for the faint-hearted. It demands substantial capital investment. Aspiring entrants often grossly underestimate the financial requirements. Establishing a complex supply chain, constructing factories, designing vehicles, adhering to regulations, and developing a distribution and service network are monumental tasks. One unique case is Apple. The company has all the money needed to start a successful EV business, so why did it fail even before it started? Apple's venture into electric vehicle production, known as Project Titan, was a significant undertaking that spanned over a decade. The project aimed to create a fully autonomous electric vehicle with a limousine-like interior and voice-guided navigation. Despite the ambitious goals, Apple ultimately decided to cancel the project. Regarding investment, Apple had indeed committed substantial resources to Project Titan. Reports suggest that Apple invested around $1 billion each year into the project, with a team of approximately 1,000 employees focused on the development. Additionally, Apple was reported to have planned a $3.6 billion investment in Kia Motors for the collaboration to build an Apple car. We are no strangers to surprises from Apple. The company has shocked us before. There it is, right there. I just take my finger and slide it across. Why would Apple spend over $1.12 billion on the production of the Apple EV only to abandon it? One issue is that Apple kept changing plans. They could not stick to a plan because the EV industry is a fast one. Things change quickly and technologies become useless within a short time. Battery technology keeps changing, and if a manufacturer does not quickly start selling their EVs, they will end up with a car that only has outdated technology. Then there is the fact that EVs still have some years to mature into a stable technology. We are still in an experimental phase even with all the EVs being sold. And the truth is, the market is not big enough, especially when you consider that people still have the choice of buying hybrids and gas engine cars. The surprising thing is, despite occasional sales slumps, forecasts predict a significant increase in global EV adoption, from 2.4% of new car sales in 2019 to an anticipated 61% by 2035. No wonder a lot of startups are attracted to the sector hoping they can get a slice of the pie. It is amazing how much of the automotive tech is being converted to electric power. We are talking about a variety of products such as buses, trucks, and motorcycles 
and there is even a potential for expansion into aircraft in the future. Some startups have built successful prototypes, but how marketable and practical they are is another question. And can you guess how much money is going into EV development? Electric car sales have suddenly gone down enormously in Germany over the first quarter of this year. A lot of people are just publishing this news and saying, you know, EV sales have more plummeted in the first quarter of this year. The investments have been significant and continue to increase with investments doubling over two years to reach an estimated $616 billion by 2027. This indicates strong confidence in the future of EVs and robust market growth. That may not be the entire truth. Something else is contributing to the EV explosion, and that thing is the government. Government policies play a pivotal role in fostering market growth. Nations keen on reducing carbon emissions offer incentives, subsidies, and other benefits to mitigate startup costs. Since 2021, Tesla has amassed over $5 billion from zero emission vehicle credits, which other automakers must purchase to offset their fossil fuel-powered sales. Essentially, other automakers are paying Tesla to keep making EVs. This is why catching up with Tesla may be impossible. China in particular has experienced rapid EV growth, supported by robust government initiatives. The emergence of new companies in certain regions has been propelled by state assistance, as well as entrepreneurs seizing the shift towards electric powertrains. Let's talk a little bit about China here. China has made significant investments to boost companies like BYD and capture the electric vehicle market. A study revealed that BYD received approximately $3.63 billion in subsidies, which has been a substantial factor in its growth and ability to compete globally. Yeah, well, I, I agree completely with what Phil just said. If you look at the Chinese EV products right now, they are very, very good. And, and listen, the Chinese knew that they missed, they missed the opportunity with internal combustion engine vehicles in terms of uh, driving market share, not only in their home market, but abroad. Despite the subsidies, China's Minister of Commerce emphasized that the success of the EV market in China is due to constant innovations rather than just financial support. But BYD is not the only Chinese EV maker to watch out for. Chinese automaker Sherry is investing $800 million in a car plant in Vietnam, indicating China's strategy to expand its EV influence in Asia. BYD has mastered core technologies across the entire industrial chain of new energy vehicles, including batteries, motors, electronic controls, and semiconductors. This vertical integration has given BYD a competitive edge and resilience against supply chain disruptions. Perhaps it is these innovations that companies like Apple are unable to keep up with while keeping costs low. BYD is aggressively pushing into global markets, launching new EV models in Japan, Thailand, and India, and planning to build factories to increase capacity. With the dominance of Chinese EV makers, competing will continue to be hard. BYD manufactured over 3 million new energy vehicles in 2023, surpassing Tesla's production for the second consecutive year and becoming the top-selling electric car seller by the last quarter of 2024. What is really surprising is the high-profile failures amidst the EV growth. Why can't legacy automakers compete? Let's look at the case of Dyson. The Dyson Electric Vehicle Project was an ambitious attempt by the British technology company, known for its vacuum cleaners and hair dryers, to enter the automotive industry. We've all known for some time that Dyson has been working on an electric car, and we've all known for some time, since as far back as October 2019 in fact, that Dyson had to kill off this electric car. The project was ultimately cancelled because it was not commercially viable. The first obstacle was the lack of financial backing. Dyson struggled to find financial backers for its EV concept. Without external investment, the project's financial sustainability was in question. Then there was the issue of high costs. The projected cost for the base model of Dyson's EV, a seven-seat SUV, was at least 150,000 euros. This price point was considered too high to be competitive in the international market. This will comfortably place the car in the price range of luxury cars, yet lacking the qualities of a luxury car. So, who is going to spend much on an average EV? Unlike other companies such as GM and Ford who have gas engine lineups that cover their EV losses, there is no way for Dyson to cut costs of its EVs. Dyson's plan included the use of solid-state batteries, 
which were expected to offer a longer range and quicker charging times. However, this technology was unproven and added to the cost and risk of the project. As if the issues were not enough, Dyson had challenges with supply. Dyson intended to source parts from Singapore and produce the EV without major involvement from large auto suppliers. This approach may have led to logistical and timing issues that did not align with Dyson's plan. Despite the project's cancellation, the experience and research gained from the venture have likely contributed to Dyson's knowledge base and may influence future projects. The company's founder, James Dyson, has expressed that he hasn't given up hope completely and is still interested in pursuing great solid-state batteries for high-performing and reliable EVs. This leads up to the core of the matter. Entering the automotive industry requires groundbreaking innovation. Launching a vehicle involves a blend of engineering prowess, design expertise, and execution capability. Securing manufacturing facilities and suppliers, navigating complex regulations, and offering novel features are essential components of success. Startups may benefit from a clean slate advantage, but they must quickly master the intricate aspects of automotive production, including design, supply chain management, manufacturing, sales, and after-sales service. How do they get all the money needed? Capital is the lifeblood of the industry. Established automakers like Ford and GM have historically achieved mid-single to low double-digit returns on invested capital. For most of its public existence, Tesla's returns on invested capital were negative. Simply put, companies often deplete their financial reserves. Fisker's financial woes exemplify the classic cash crunch, partly due to the inherent capital intensity of becoming an automaker and partly due to strategic missteps. The initial capital required to produce the first vehicle can be staggering, often exceeding $2 billion. However, this investment is merely the starting point. Success in the EV industry requires continuous momentum. Any little slack in the industry can put you out of business. Companies must be capable of securing subsequent rounds of funding to sustain growth and expansion. Rivian and Lucid, for instance, have each burned through $10 billion. It's intriguing to observe smaller startups raising $1 billion or $2 billion, mistakenly believing it to be sufficient. The reality is far more demanding. Is there any up to seeing more players succeed in the EV industry? Success cannot be rushed. While the EV market is indeed growing, it must be accepted that we are far from being ready for this transition. It will take more time. For now, companies like Tesla and BYD will continue to dominate, and we may not see much competition in the future. After all, gas-powered cars are dominated by only a few successful companies, and the electric vehicle market won't be different. Every year, billions of dollars are invested, and we are sure to soon see another major player in the EV market. The likely outcome is for other legacy car makers such as Menendez, Toyota, Ford, or GM to join Tesla as a major player. Stay tuned for the best news in the automotive industry by subscribing now.